Today we're going to look at strategic ambiguity and how this shapes our lives in organizational settings. So let's get into the details. Welcome back. In this video, we'll define strategic ambiguity, contrast it with clarity, talk about some practical uses, and discuss some ethical considerations. So in terms of overview, strategic ambiguity describes the way people may communicate unclearly but still accomplish their goals. This video is based largely on the work of Eric Eisenberg, who first wrote extensively about it in 1984 in an article, Ambiguity as Strategy in Organizational Communication. That was in Communication Monographs. He also talks about this extensively in his textbook on organizational communication. So everything I say really here is based upon Eisenberg's work. So let's contrast this with clarity. Sometimes we need clarity in a given situation to be more effective communicators. For example, clarity equals an individual has an idea, he or she encodes the idea into language, and the receiver understands the message as it was intended by the source. That's Eisenberg's explanation of what clarity is. That should sound familiar if it sounds like the classic sender message channel receiver model of communication. That's all about clarity. In contrast, other times a level of ambiguity may be more effective. We may have multiple goals or diverse audiences that call for words that pursue those goals and speak to those audiences at the same time, and an overly clear message may not do the job. In terms of practical uses, the first practical use is that it promotes unified diversity. So not all listeners are going to interpret things exactly the same, but as long as everybody interprets the message in a relatively helpful way, it should create some unity among those diverse listeners. American Express knows this. Their slogan is, we work hard to make American Express the world's most respected service brand. And I really like this statement. It's fairly general, but it speaks to their employees and it speaks to their customers because it's using strategic ambiguity to unify those diverse audiences. When they say work hard, I probably don't think that hard work means exactly the same thing that every other person does, but still we all likely have pretty productive views of what hard work should look like. Same thing as world's most respected brand. We don't all think of respect in exactly the same way, but nevertheless, we're probably all interpreting that in a helpful, productive way that unifies otherwise diverse listeners. So it promotes diverse interpretations that are still unified in their overall direction. Strategic ambiguity also facilitates change in organizational life. People are often going through transition, and leaders can explain a future direction in ways to which each individual listener can relate. So let's say your company is no longer going to be funded by its parent company. You may have to address that as the leader. If you're using strategic ambiguity, you could say it like this. Breaking away from our parent company will help us become more innovative and adaptive as we move forward. So we haven't specified exactly what that will look like in terms of being more innovative and adaptive, but surely most employees for that organization can see the value of innovation and adaptation, and they can see themselves in that statement. In other words, they can picture personally how they could be more innovative and adaptive in their individual work. So a statement like that can facilitate change so that employees can see the future in a positive way. Third, strategic ambiguity allows for deniability. And certainly there's an unethical side to this, which we'll get to in a minute. But for now, let's talk about an ethical use of it. Sometimes speakers need to protect themselves and ambiguity can help. So let's say you want to get out of a particular position because uh, people aren't treating you very well. You might say to someone that can help, I feel uncomfortable in this job. And so I'm pursuing a new position. That protects you or allows for deniability against an overly clear interpretation that says, you mean you can't get along with your boss. Now, since you never said, I can't get along with my boss, you have deniability. You're protected from that interpretation. Strategic ambiguity also preserves privileged positions. And again, there's an unethical side, but let's stick to the ethical side for now. Sometimes leaders cannot be overly specific in public. Why? Well, competitors might be listening. Decisions might be imminent and you can't talk about it yet. Other people might use those specifics that the leader says against them in the future. And so sometimes leaders have to use ambiguous statements to protect against that. 
So let's talk about some ethical considerations. Obviously, strategic ambiguity is an incredibly powerful communication tool, but it is unethical if ambiguity covers wrongdoing, hides important facts, and limits listeners' ability to make an informed choice. We can't support that kind of use of strategic ambiguity. Ulmer and Salnow in their 1997 article about the tobacco industry said it like this, if organizational leaders use ambiguity or incomplete information to cloud listeners' understanding of a situation, then strategic ambiguity should be judged unethical. In other words, you never want to act as if you're giving people a more complete picture of reality than you are. You never want to use ambiguity to confuse your listeners and throw them off the scent. You only want to use ambiguity in an ethical way if it is meant to include a broader range of listeners and to reach multiple goals honestly. So we're assuming here that anytime you're using strategic ambiguity, you're doing it for the benefit of listeners and the benefit for everybody involved. You're not using it to essentially manipulate. So let's recap. First, we define strategic ambiguity. We contrasted it with clarity, and I think there's a lot of value, educational value in doing that. We talked about four practical uses. We also talked about some ethical considerations. No conversation about it will be complete without that. So question of the day, what are your thoughts about strategic ambiguity? I would love to hear your comments in that section below the video. I hope you found this video on strategic ambiguity helpful. We have videos just like this all over the Organizational Communication channel. I invite you to subscribe if you have not yet done so. So thanks, God bless, and I'll see you next time.